say, do you have the authority of Colin Russell hyphen J Colin Gould for the teaching? All life claims must have his autograph and thumbprint or it is null and void. Spoken like a true cult follower. Charles, I've had a claim of the live life with correct grammar correct sentence structure, communication, parsley, syntax, grammar, since 2017. The correct live life claim mechanics are that there must be at least three live life claim witnesses on your live life claim because it's a continuance of the evidence to certify that you are a living, breathing creature. Charles, and I'm speaking directly to you because from your comment, I can guess that you have indeed paid money, hundreds of dollars for a live life claim authorized by Russell J. Gould. Have you ever met Russell J. Gould face to face? Because if you haven't, how can Russell J. Gould be a witness on your live life claim? You have to witness someone in order to provide a continuance of the evidence that you know that they're a living, breathing creature. These are simple live life claim mechanics. Ever since Cole and David Ivan Wim Kohler Miller passed away, uh, Russell began trying to subtly modify, modify the live life claim mechanics into, well now all you need is his autograph and thumbprint on your live life claim and now you're suddenly a live life claimant where before that, that had nothing to do with it. And uh, hopefully, if I remember, I will leave a link to a video in the upper uh, starboard side corner of your screen that you can click on where you can literally hear Colin Russell, I mean, Colin David Hyphen Colin Miller say, do not send your live life claims to us. We don't want them, they're yours. And Russell J. Gould's standing right next to him when he says it. Now you have to ask yourself, Charles. I mean, you don't have to ask yourself, but you might think about asking yourself if you have one little itsy-bitsy piece of critical thinking in your authoritarian skull. Why did Russell change all that after David passed away? Anyways, to answer your question, do you have the authority of Russell J. Gould for the teaching? No, because Russell J. Gould has no authority over me or over what I do. And the last part of your sentence is complete and utter horse pucky. Horse pucky. Next comment comes from Pi314, and they say, what is being said is the weight of water vapor in a given volume of air. All air contain water vapor. When air pressure is lower and temperature is lower and air moisture is high, clouds form. Sometimes, as the day heats up, water droplets and clouds can be absorbed by the air and no clouds. Buoyancy refers to density. As a helium hot air balloon or zeppelin will rise, a gas such as, a, such as sulfur hexafluoride will sink in air. 
Most gases mix with air. The cubic volume of a large cloud will contain 500 tons of water vapor. Consider if you were to use a dehumidifier to dry up that cloud, that's how to consider it. And uh, I gave uh, gratitude for what that individual shared as it was in the context of the video they were commenting on where I was talking about gravity, which they don't mention anything about gravity. So, I mean, that does give a little bit more circumstantial data, but there's nothing that I can really prove firsthand. But I do appreciate them going out of their way to share that. Next set of comments comes from TikTok. And uh, it's on a video where I said that Colin Russell, Ivan J. Colin Gould does not give any credit to Colin David, Ivan Wayne, Colin Miller. As a matter of fact, he usually downplays David Wynn Miller or outright uh, insults him. And Monty says, he doesn't give any credit to David Wynn Miller. Spells the name wrong, of course, and they all have trouble with their spacing at the colons. Because he has to separate himself from David. David told such huge lies that he had to get away from him. He had to get away from him. David passed away. There's, that's about as far away as away from someone as you can get. And they pass away. <laughs> so then I respond, uh, yes. Enter the RJG cult follower apologist who is content to swallow what RJG feeds them without trying to get the whole story. And then they correspond back. If you think that I am a follower of Russell J. Gould, then you are greatly mistaken. I think he's a liar. I think both of them are full of it. And then they say, I do know the whole story, at least what is out there for the public. I've looked up public, any public record of cases they filed into the court. I'm very aware. And then I said, if you know the whole story, then list the huge lies that you claim David supposedly told. Please be specific. Because up there he does say, David told such huge lies. Now, this whole time, this individual was responding back to me very quickly. But as soon as I asked them for evidence, they stopped. They stopped responding. So this is typical of Fo, even though he claims he's not a Russell J. Gould follower or supporter, and even down here he says Russell is a joke. He still says things like David told such huge lies. Okay, what's what are the huge lies? Crickets. Hold on to your hats, folks. It's about to get spicy. Pi314 says, whilst on FB recently, I mentioned to a younger FB friend who I have physically met that my wise grammar tutor suggests not taking anything personal. He was making some claims, heard via the internet, that were not true giving my knowledge searches. Then I asked, what do you really know? Then he attacked, ha ha, and never provided a fact. Okay. So this is a comment on a video where I'm talking about, I think I was talking about ego as, you know, an issue with some folks. Like it can really get in the way of being open-minded and things like that if you're not careful. And then Pi314 says, as a note, I did follow up with some firm comments that he was not knowledgeable and then asked why I was attacking him. And he then asked why I was attacking him. He, he, he did not see his ways. So what this individual is saying to, to my knowledge from my uh, perception is that they're telling us someone on the internet that they know and have met in person, I guess, that that person is not knowledgeable about something, which I have no idea what he's talking about because he didn't specify what it was. Um, so basically, another way of saying that, if you're telling someone they're not knowledgeable, you, you may as well also just say they're stupid 
They're ignorant about something, right? You're ignorant about this. You're just ignorant, which is not, I mean, it is a judgment, but you got to be very careful with things like that because you don't really know what they know, do you? You're not them. How could you possibly? Well, I, I will show you uh, my kuleana. I said, that's where you and I differ. I would not presume to tell a stranger they were not knowledgeable regarding a subject because much more proof would be needed to certify a specific knowledge deficit. Now to reiterate, Pi314 did say that they had met this individual in person, which doesn't really mean you know someone. If you meet them in person, that doesn't really mean anything at all. You can meet your favorite celebrity in person, doesn't mean you know them. Um, that's why I never say that unless it's pertaining to correct sentence structure and something I can certify with hard evidence, which is true. That's why I can say that, you know, and even then I don't reach a concrete conclusion. Like when I say, Colin Russell, Haven, J. Colin Gould does not have closure on the grammar based upon the evidence in his documents that are out there in the public for all to see, I can speculate as to why he does not have closure, but I don't really know for sure. But I do know for sure that the documents show that he doesn't have closure. And I can prove that. I think what this individual is talking about is probably a little different than that. Again, I don't know for sure because I didn't go into specifics. I'm going into detail because I see a possible psychological knowledge cultivation scenario here. And in my mind, I'm thinking, I bet dollars to donuts that Pi314 is either, number one, going to basically have kind of a knee-jerk reaction and get a little defensive. Um... Because I know that they think that they're pretty smart. I know this from their past comments and conversations. And they do not hesitate to tell me how knowledgeable they are about a variety, a plethora of subjects. Don't hesitate to tell me or anyone else. Um, so I'm thinking, hmm, this could be an opportunity for this individual to exercise some humility to cultivate some humility, to say, yeah, Jason, I see what you're saying. You know, that's, that's a very important point. You don't outright call someone ignorant or stupid or that they're not knowledgeable about something, especially someone you don't really know on the internet. There are different ways to go about it. All right. I, I just wanted to see how they were going to the energy they were going to give back, whether they were going to go the route of humility or the route of ego. And you will see what happens here. They said, I appreciate your comment. I am very knowledgeable in health principles. See, they don't hesitate to tell me what they're very knowledgeable in. I have proven this to myself as I have studied and tested many theories. Okay. But that doesn't really mean anything here because I don't know you. And you haven't proven anything to me other than that you think you know a lot about certain things. It is somewhat difficult to prove this correct massive quantity of knowledge I have on the subject. So they admit that it's difficult to prove. I do not have ego or arrogance. That's pretty funny. That's like Russell J. Gould saying, I am humble. I am kind. I am not... I do not have an ego. I am not arrogant. I would never say that. I personally would never. Because if someone tells you that, just like someone says, uh, I'm really tough, it usually means the opposite. So if someone says they're really knowledgeable, it usually means they're not. If someone says they don't have an ego, it usually means they do have an ego. If they're not arrogant. Well, it usually means they are arrogant. If they have to tell you that, that's usually what it means. That's why I make it a point to never do that. 
because I would never make the claim to not be arrogant. I know that I am conscious of the fact that I perhaps can come off that way. I'm very conscious of that. I'm very cognizant of it. But I do cultivate humility. And then again, though, I don't tolerate bullshit from folks like this who try to pretend that they don't have an ego or they're not arrogant. But when you really look, they, they say, I am very knowledgeable in health principles. You know, they come right out and say that apropos of nothing. If someone's telling you, coming right out and telling you, I'm an expert in this, usually means they're not, right? So I do not agree with your claim of a difference between us. There's a huge difference, but of course you're welcome to not agree. I was asked to give a lecture in 2011 and declined as I was not confident I knew it all. I do now. Most do not want to know and hear the facts. Okay, so Pi314 was not confident that he knew it all. But he does now. So Pi314 knows it all now. Do you hear that? I wish I could show you the sincere thank yous from an ex-nurse I coached for many hours and days. She trusted me and implemented my recommendations. She has transformed her health that most would not believe. And now they're going out of their way to give me testimony, second and third hand testimony, as if that really means anything or has any type of continuance of the evidence at all towards what, what he's saying here. Like, why is he doing this? I personally would never go into someone else's channel comments field and just start talking about shit that has nothing to do with grammar or, or ego or anything like that. I would never go on there and just start going on and on about how knowledgeable I am about something and how many people I've helped and how many people say such nice things about me, me, me. I hope he watches this, and I hope he can reflect back on this mirror that's being offered. So my Kuliana is, of course you may disagree. That's your prerogative. But going on and on about how much you know, you know it all now, according to your own words. He literally said that. And then offering secondhand witness testimony to support your position doesn't go too far towards cultivating humility or showing evidence of little to no ego with my perception, which they did say they don't have an ego, right? But yet they feel the need to defend themselves. They feel the need to justify what they're saying. So if they don't have an ego, why would they need to do that? Why wouldn't they just sh shut up? <laughs> Seriously, think about it, folks. This is a different type of, uh, I guess, fishing thing. I made the analogy of fishing with that quality control troll that I gave him some line and then yanked him in and, and caught him and released him. It's kind of the same thing here. I'm giving Pi314 enough line so that they can decide what they want to do. They can, there's, you know, they can either go the humble, the route of humility, or they can do what they're doing here, which is basically embedding the hook deeper and deeper into them because I'm, I'm pulling them in now. So pay attention to what I said here, if you would, please, because they are now going to start getting a little bit sarcastic. They said, certainly it is your prerogative to not agree with my claim. See, they're, they're paraphrasing me. Of course, you may disagree. That's your prerogative. Certainly it is your prerogative to not agree with my claim. I understand your position. Unfortunately, this is the current state of the world. So much fiction and little trust with a man's word and other witness testimony. So... What this guy is basically saying is he's kind of chastising me for not taking him at his word. 
what you mean the word of the two or three times you contacted me via email saying that you were so ready to learn correct sentence structure and get closure on it that you were ready to take workshops and then you disappeared and never contacted me again until months later more than once you mean you mean that type of man's word doing what you say okay Oh, and then they got to go into the appeal to emotion thing here, which is a logical fallacy. When my father's sister was dying of a diagnosis of cancer, he called me and he rarely calls me. My mom makes the call. Mom makes the calls. I spent the entire next day educating them and preparing juices with my angel juicer and received a thank you call from his sister whilst she was in the hospital. Disease is not normal. Cancer is the last stage of health but can be reversed by following the Gerson therapy, which I learned fully in 2011. What in the hell does this have to do with ego? Other than Pi314 is still trying to justify his existence in this comments field. They're completely off the rails now. Now they're appealing to emotion because of course, I mean, cancer is a terrible thing and it's kind of tugging on the old heartstrings by saying things like that. Why is he doing that? What's, what's he trying to achieve here, folks? Zoom back and look at this without any emotion at all. Look at it objectively. What are they trying to do? Why are they jockeying for a position with me? Because they don't have closure on correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, and they know it. That's why they're not talking about it. They're trying to talk about something else, which I'm allowing them to do for now. So now I'm going to get a little bit more harsh. Is there a reason you are reiterating my comment in your response? Interesting approach. From my guess, the state of the world has always been thus. Only a fool takes a stranger at their word, regardless of how highly the stranger thinks of themselves and their words. It's crystal clear logic. To take a man as a word may apply to promises, but not to knowledge levels or skill levels. Those must be proven or articulated, and articulated clearly and efficiently. I, for one, would not go onto someone else's channel comments field and begin sharing how extremely knowledgeable I am regarding a topic that has nothing to do with the channel itself. Because reading the brief terms and conditions of the comments field is wild. But that's me. So now I've drawn the line and we're going to see which side of the line this individual falls on. So now he's going to bring in an unbiased witness, his daughter. I shared all this with my daughter just now. She says you're super egotistical. I said I can deal with that as he generally has some good points and knowledge of correct sentence structure that I would also like to know. I have read the channel's suggestions. I was expanding on the situation of my friend's attacking remarks. Uh, no, you weren't. You never specified that that's what your friend was talking about. Never did you do that. You just started talking about how knowledgeable you were about this, that, and the third. And then you started saying that this nurse says you're knowledgeable, that your father's sister's cousin says you're knowledgeable, or whatever else you said. I shall not talk of my other subject's knowledge again other than correct sentence structure. Strange world when you can't trust another human being. What in the living hell does that have to do with anything that's going on here, bro? What does trust have to do with anything? What trust is there? I certainly don't trust you from your behavior. There's no doubt about it, but that's okay. That doesn't even figure into it. There's no animosity. I'm not taking anything personally. I'm giving Kuliana and feedback. And really, folks, what I'm trying to do is to cultivate humility here, not only for myself, but to show an example, show, uh, shine a light on this individual's, by my perception, lack of humility and possession of a massive ego because they can't back down and they won't back down. They can't see, as they say, the forest for the trees at this point. Perhaps I am foolish for trusting too much. Yeah, you're not wrong, bro. I do like to hear someone out, though, when they make a sincere claim given my initial discernment. We once exchanged family photos. I think they're talking about he and I. Not sure where we went wrong. I also 
did use your prerogative in jest. How am I supposed to know that? You didn't say you were joking, but now you say you're joking? <laughs> and of course, it is obvious I or you may disagree on occasion. I did not find it interesting. You made that claim. And then they say, I highly value your knowledge of correct science structure and distribution of this knowledge. I only share with you because I have other subject of knowledge I would like a friend to know. Well, did you ask your friend if they wanted to know? Or are you just pushing it on it like a Jehovah's Witness or a Mormon knocking on your door saying, have you heard the good news? That's a trespass. In any case, the point I'm making here with this guy, which... I have actually banned him in the past, and then I reinstated him, and then he behaved himself for a while, and now he's back at it again, trying to prove that he knows something about something that has nothing to do with anything that I do, or anything that I would actually find useful, at least not that I've seen. From my knowledge, I guess he comes here to learn correct sentence structure, which he has not done yet. Uh, and again, as I said, you know, he, we've done a workshop, I think, and, but he doesn't have closure in the grammar. And then several times he contacted me wanting to complete the course and then disappears and banishes him. And then contacts me months later, like nothing happened. Or like the one time he got angry at me because I basically called him to the carpet on his use of the word God. And then he wrote back to me saying, you know, that, oh, he thought I was, you know, to paraphrase, he thought more of me, but now I'm questioning God that, that now he thinks that, you know, he was mistaken about me and he didn't want to talk to me anymore or, or do workshops with me because I didn't buy into his bullshit God concept that he couldn't prove to me. Rather than try and prove it to me or give me any evidence, he basically stopped talking to me because I needed proof of his God because I don't participate in the concept of God. And he had a problem with that. And then he contacted me months later as if nothing happened. So it's a little something going on here. I don't know what it is, but I can choose not to deal with it. And I have done that. I have done this right here, banned him. And I'm pretty sure it's going to stick this time. And by the way, you see that they are a member. I gifted that to them. So it's no big deal that I have banned a member. It's no sweat off my back. Next comment comes from Harris Diz. And they say, the majority of people are not aware when their ego takes over. Truer words have never been spoken. What a perfect comment after all that. However, when you are aware, you don't respond to theirs with your own ego. And that is true. Again, I try to cultivate humility. And I have also said this in the past. To some folks, I, I do come off as arrogant uh, and egotistical and things like that. I, I can't really... I have no stewardship over that. I have no control over what you think of me. And I got to honestly say, I'm not too concerned about it because the only thing I'm concerned about is the position of peace and neutrality, the maintenance of rule one, rule equal, and the balance of the honor and the grace. And when someone starts violating the terms and conditions of my comments field like Pi314 did, well, those things are off the table. Now, of course, I didn't go after them both barrels blazing like I said in, the, in one, a recent video. I did sort of uh, guide them, or as they say, I guess, give them enough rope to hang themselves with. And that's exactly what happened. And what usually happens, because folks, I've been doing this for a long time. I feel like I've been doing it for a long time, over six years, dealing with many, many different personalities. And Pi314 is really the least of my worries. Um, I've had much worse than that. I've had folks that I've had to ban and then they try and get at me through other ways for whatever reason. 
uh, stalkers. <laughs> Next comment comes from Paradigm Pure Health, and they say, brilliant graphics to add clarity to the closure. Thanks, Jason and Ricardo. Folks, they're talking about a video that Ricardo made with graphics, and he used my audio to narrate the video. Very cool stuff. We did a few collaborations like that. Hopefully we'll be doing stuff like that in the future. I just spoke with Ricardo the other day. And uh, we're going to get together in the coming weeks and create some content. And get that out there for you on this channel right here. Maybe on his channel too. I don't know if he's going to want to publish it or not. But definitely you're going to see the two of us together in the near future. Final comment comes from Paradigm Pure Health, and they say, I am amazed that this is beginning to make sense. Thank you. Well, you're welcome. I have a question, but I'm heading to the syntax playlist to see if I'll locate the answer before the workshop I successfully applied for. Well, that is super cool. This comment, this is one of those comments that makes everything worthwhile for me in my heart of hearts. Because this individual said, I have a question, but I'm going to try and look it up first before I ask it. How cool is that? Someone who actually exercises critical thinking and logic and wants to try and exhaust all the possibilities before they come to me for the answer. Rather than most people who just don't even bother to look anything up and just want to be spoon fed. And yes, since they said it, I'll say it too. We do have a confidential workshop coming up. And I look forward to teaching folks like that, human beings like that. With that type of attitude, with my perception, it is the correct attitude. The attitude of the Pi 314s, not the correct attitude. It's a pleasure to teach individuals like Paradigm Pure Health, which I'm not really sure who they are. But I'm sure I'll find out in the near future when we do the workshop. Thank you very much for watching. Again, keep your eyes out. I'm going to be doing a 60-minute-ish confidential Q&A. A minimum donation of $11 to attend. More details will be coming in the future. Uh, on the 17th of September which if I publish this video when I'm supposed to publish it, it will be tomorrow. I'm doing a special birthday live stream because it is David Wynn Miller's birthday on the 17th of September. Did you know that? I'm going to celebrate it by telling some stories, sharing some things that you probably never heard before uh, from my conversations with David. And uh, it should be fun. So I hope to see you there. Thank you.